Hey guys, there's tons of videos about mistakes that we all make in musky fishing. This isn't really that. This is about the one big mistake that I see a majority of guys that have never fished a shield lake make. It's a mistake that we made and it wasn't until very recently that we started to get away from this mistake. What is it do you say? It is everybody, including you, come up to Canada and you fish too shallow when you're structure fishing. All right, what does too shallow mean on structure? Well, if we look at the whiteboard here, it's kind of a standard island on a shield lake with an attached reef kind of connected through a saddle. Pretty common shield lake stuff. A lot of times guys come up here, and especially if it's your first or second time, it's something that we did until very recently, like the last four or five years, we started to kind of drift away from this style of fishing. But a lot of guys come up here, they look at a spot like this on, you know, a map or on satellite pictures. And the obvious spot is we got to fish the saddle. We got to fish this rock point, rock point off of this side. Those are all key spots and you're going to see fish there. But in a lot of cases in Canada, what you're going to see up on the shallows, other than at prime perfect condition times, is you're going to see smaller fish sitting in these shallow areas. And in a lot of cases, the bigger fish are going to be sitting off of structure, just off enough that if you were to position your boat in, say, here in 12, 14 feet of water, and you're casting up to this 8 foot, you are probably sitting where that fish might be sitting. And it's hard to wrap your head around it because when you're up on a spot you want to cast to what you can see or what you think the structure looks like under the water and that's why in a lot of cases with a point that comes off of an island or mainland we want to position our boat so we're here and we're casting you know up onto that structure and that does work and some of the examples i have here you see us doing exactly that but you also see us going back and fishing a little bit deeper so in most cases it's Position your boat one casting distance further out and cast to about where you would have been sitting with the boat. And the point here is you're trying to get those fish that are sitting suspended off of some of this structure. So if I take this rock point off this corner, there might be fish sitting shallow here, but there's a good chance there's going to be fish sitting, you know, in these corners, but suspended away from structure and you want to try and target those fish. Here's a perfect example, just going right back to the whiteboard that we were just looking at. We're fishing a rock extension off of an island. I cast super shallow, fishing here with my wife and my kids. We're kind of trying to contact fish at this point, so it's not so much about big fish. I actually have a fish follow in. We see it come around and ultimately we end up hooking this one in the figure eight here but the point i'm trying to make is i'm doing what most people do when they first come up to canada they look at structure that looks fishy that looks like they should be fishing and they start casting those areas and it does work you're going to contact fish and we hook this fish up we get it in the net and i'm going to compare this to the same spot but fishing a little bit deeper All right, here's the very same spot, and that's the same small kind of extension of rock coming out that you can see up in the left-hand corner. But we are out, this is David and I, we're out quite a bit deeper. I'm fishing a Shadzilla, and I'm trying to target that first steep break. I actually got hooked up, and ultimately I lost this fish, but I just thought this footage was really good because it was the exact same spot where I had caught one on the same structure but fishing shallower. And this just shows you that you can be off of that structure and still contact Okay, so if fish. I change to this view here, it's a little bit easier to understand where it is that we're positioning our boat and where we're fishing. So this is a pretty standard looking deep breaking shoreline on a shield lake. We have shoreline and kind of some rubble coming down to about six feet. There's a little bit of a shelf, drops down to about eight feet, and then we see a steep drop. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter what this distance is, 
but in a lot of cases, guys are gonna position their boat here over top of that eight to 10 foot break line, and they're gonna be casting up into that shallow area. That does work, absolutely does work on shield lakes. Not saying that it doesn't, but in a lot of cases, you were overlooking fish that could be sitting out off of this break line. So if there's fish sitting here, they could be sitting just off of this break line, close to bottom. And in most cases, as you bring your lure back into the boat, that fish isn't even gonna react to your lure. Now, if you position the boat out further and you cast to, say, the middle of this shelf, now you got a chance of pulling that fish out. And if you take it one step further and we have a fish that's sitting out suspended over top of deep water and I'll position the fish right here, which is in line with this transition from rock side, kind of rock island structure to sand or soft bottom. That transition right there is always key on shield lakes. Fish will sit suspended off of that transition line. He might, that fish might only be eight feet down, but it's sitting over top of 20, 30 feet of water and it's suspended out. And in most cases, you're sitting on top of that fish with your boat. I know we talked about this in an earlier video, but we didn't really relate it to the extent that we are here. So what I always see guys do is they want to sit tight to structure because they want to cast to the shoreline. A few years back, Greg Thomas from Muskie Hunter asked me to write a chapter for the 25 more can't miss musky patterns. And none of it would matter if I didn't actually follow my own advice. And today I wouldn't have caught a fish if I didn't actually practice what I wrote in here. Let's dig deeper into this fish. So we're, where we're throwing is like 10 feet then up there? Hey, we're still on the 20 foot outer edge, but okay. because we're on the main basin, it's always good to check these edges. Yep. Because if these fish are sitting out, like the shelf is eight to 10 feet. They'll sit off of these edges in eight to 10 feet over top of 20. And then we'll just slowly drift their way up onto the shelf where the weeds are. So yeah, I picked that up on one of your videos. And yeah, it's always and good to sit. Come in, instead of coming in hot and yeah. shooting right up there, you know, just lay back. And yep, and just give yourself a bit of time. Doesn't take very long to cast a few as you're pulling up onto it. Yep. Now a lot of guys like to just roll up on structure, cut the motor, throw the troller and be casting and a lot of times you're just, you drove over fish to get to fish. Yeah, and yeah, you just, came, you just came blazing in. Yeah. Or I've gotten to them too, you get, and then you end up you're too close, yep. you're like, ah, oh, I wish I went to... Go it's always, this, yeah. yeah, it's always easier to move in. Once you're in too tight, you can't move out because yep. now you've spooked the fish. And then you can't get back out very easily no. either. It's just like, dang. You lose casting angles. Yeah. A lot of things go wrong. Certain lakes will produce more than others. There's a nice one. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Got him. Got him. Back this way. Back this way, Michael. Yep. Oh. All right, dude. Nice. Awesome. Okay, here's another example of fishing the shallow side of structure versus fishing off of the deeper break line. Here we're fishing the uh, shallower side of this reef that you can see just submerged out of the water. I'm reeling in, I have a follow, and I end up getting this fish to go on the eight. And as I suspect, it's a smaller fish sitting on what would be the shallower side of this reef. And this is stark contrast to the next clip that I'm gonna jump ahead here. I'm fishing out in the deeper channel with my buddies, Matt, Ron, and Cindy, and we're sharpshooting in this next clip. And what we're seeing is that over 50 feet of water, we're seeing fish suspended off of that deep 15 to 20 foot break line. And I apologize for the shaky camera movements here, but the main point I'm trying to make is that we seen this fish sitting out over deep water breaks and Matt was able to cast to that mark, sharpshoot it, pick it up, get it in the net. So just looking at two different pieces of structure or one piece of structure, two different ways.
This next example, we're fishing world famous Eagle Lake. We're fishing way out in the middle of a channel. It's one of my favorite fish from 2021. And I'm not even worried about trying to cast towards what would be the reef. I'm just targeting the deep breaking break line way on the windswept side of it. Let's check this fish out. So this is a Harvey Javelin, and he hit it way out from the boat, just crushed it hard, doubled us over. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching. We're all guilty of mistakes like this. Unfortunately, it's something that you have to learn over time. And it's one of those things that it's just, you almost have to learn by making your own mistakes and learning them on the water. Videos like this and others that are on YouTube and, and all of the great musky guys that have wrote articles and stuff have talked about stuff like this. But once you start to visualize it for yourself out on the water, it becomes much easier. And for another day that we use something very similar to this, check out the video right here where we put some nice fish in the boat using techniques very similar to this. Until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.